four minutes, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Great start. Barry Lester <laughs> telling us that there's four minutes to go <laughs> until the match starts. But here we go. A nice little moment there at the front of the green as the French team and the Australian team have a photo before this contest. The final contest of Section 2 here at uh, in the men's triples of the World Boss Championships of 2023. It's a must win for Australia because it's a case of win and in. India have the bye. They sit second currently. But if Australia do win, their healthy shot differential will see them go through to the quarterfinals. The Australian team, of course, Carl Healy, Corey Wedlock and Aaron Sheriff up against the French team who sit sixth on four and three. They can't go any lower than that. So a great tournament from them. Thomas Royer, Amaury Dumont and Maxime Foy taking on the Australians. And they, uh, they've had a great tournament. It's their first time ever at the World Bowls Championships. Val Ferbo here with you for this Clash Barry Lester joins me. We've already heard him, though, already telling us that there was four minutes. There's three now. Yeah, bonjour, Val. Bonjour. Looking forward to this, mate. Um, hello to Mrs. Mackay, my old French teacher. <laughs> Way back then, in many years ago. How'd you go in French, Baz? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I turned up. I was there. I was there. I saw some of the lessons. <laughs> yeah, I remember hearing how to speak French and don't know if I executed it very well, but I was definitely there. And That's why you're a bowler. Yeah. I, uh, I, Italian's probably my favourite language. Yeah. But, but uh, what I do love, though, is seeing the French playing lawn bowls. I uh, went to the Eiffel Tower a few years back, saw a game of um, patonk going on. And uh, had a couple of goes at it on the grounds there, just under the tower. Didn't do any good at that, as well as the uh, actual language. So, But looking forward to this, mate, seeing so. how they fare up against the Aussies. Exactly right. Well, Australia, we've spoken about their tournament. They lost to Malaysia in the first match this morning, backed it up with a win over Fiji after that. The French, they sit at four and three, so they're going to finish with at least an even ledger, which is really good, I think, considering the, you know, the, the experience isn't quite there for them, but... Uh, defeating Samoa, Fiji, Turkey, and Argentina on their way to uh, on their way to this ledger, which is quite impressive. Um, Australia, as we said, India have the buy. Their shot difference of plus 87, not as superior as the 137 of the Aussies. So Australia, should they win, they are going through to the quarterfinals, which we'll see them feature in tomorrow's action, I believe. That'll be at Broadbeach. Yeah, it's, yep. uh, that's where they want to be. Just finishing the day on the high and signing off on their pack passage to the finals. So it'll be 8.30 at Broadbeach. And, of course, we will confirm the streaming schedule to, uh, later tonight. So stay tuned for the Bowls Australia Facebook page for the update for when we're, or what we're going to be streaming tomorrow at the Broadbeach Bowls Club. Very much looking forward to it. Yeah, green speed hasn't really changed much. Uh, the players have had a good rest over the lunch break and uh, they're raring to go. They want to finish the day on the high. And the French, well, getting a photo with the Aussies and vice versa, making memories. That's what it's all about, making friends, making it memories. Is. And I, I reckon a few of the boys might be getting to know the French. They might be looking for somewhere to stay if they want to check out the Olympics next year. I know I was sniffing around trying to get to know it, looking for a spare bed. Love to go to the Olympics. Never been. So just uh, about to get underway here. Yeah, we've got um, some big games going on. Certainly do. So players saying st staying in the same direction as they did last session. North-south. Wind has not. Moved an inch in the last three or four hours. Sort of sat at the same sort of rate as Corey Wedlock opens up on the forehand on the wide side. Nice start. So the Australians in blue, the French in red. Yeah, and speaking to the French trio. Maxime and Amory, or sorry, Maxime and Thomas. So Thomas Royer is their lead, and Maxime Froich is their skip. Both of them come from Bocci, and Amory plays Patonk, and 
was a silver medalist in the European Championships in mixed fours. So I have pedigree, but I, w- I was talking to them and they said there's only one bowling green in France and it's in the south near the Riviera. And if Australia, if they do finish second, they'll play the top of Section 3, which will be the USA, Ireland or South Africa. So that's the scenario for the Aussies as they look to get themselves into the quarterfinals and into the knockout stages. And first couple of bowls from Thomas Royer, just a bit far. It's time for... Aaron Sheriff to insert himself on this contest here for the first time and speaking to Amélie Dumont, who will go head-to-head with him, said this match might be a little bit complicated. Duke Dumont, one of my favourite bands. Some great songs, great classic tracks, Duke Dumont. I wonder if he's in a relationship. We should get some playing in the background. But Aaron Sheriff on the backhand, nailing the line only a yard through. We're going to see... What I would, what I'd probably think heading in this direction, a few bowls on the shorter side as that breeze keeps blustering towards this jack. As well, gonna well got it in the middle in the end. Got it, Amory. Got the job done, and that is holding sway. It's glorious day at Mudgery Bar. The wind from the second session has well and truly died down, Baz. Yeah, it's still just hovering around it. Dropped off a little bit, but um, not too much to worry about. I think it will within the next sort of hour as uh, the temperature drops slightly. The wind will as well sort of go hand in hand, the wind and the and the temperature. But, um, yeah, this is a type of game, especially early on. Both players, uh, sorry, both teams will want to zone in and try and get a good feel for this green as they come off another green next door. Even though both greens are perfect, they're very similar. Still just a different feel, different part of the club. And we need a clear run here. Might get down for a count, just running through. So not a bad start. All four bowls from the French, passing Jack. We saw some fancy footwork from a couple of players earlier with their bowls. Doing some soccer skills out there on the green. So, Brian Wilkins asking, where would we find a club in France? Well, there's only one, and it is in the south of France. The French Federation for Lawn Bowls, located in Lyon. Carl Healy needs to get down. Well, that's a great opener because... There was a little bit of room there, I know, but the fact that Corey Redlock played two on the forehand and Aaron Sheriff played two on the backhand, there wasn't much to go off. And then Carl's come out and nailed it. As you will see previously this morning when Australia played on the live stream, they were using the red bowls, and now they've switched to the blue. <coughs> so players switching colours, switching greens, switching direction. So it's just adjusting all the time. Are these players in this particular championship? And Carl Healy having a couple around the tee there. He'll just be confident getting another shot bowl in there. And a nice line. Just interested to see if it comes back. Needs to let go now. Needs to work in. He's trying hard. Well, just a fraction over. So just a yard out of counting there. Definitely got the tee now. If uh, the French go on the charge here. So Maxime look to find his way into the head here. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad on a high line, but the weight's very handy. That's a lovely bowl. It great is. shot. It is. Great effort there from the French skip. And Australia. They're the ones that open proceedings with a one. Yeah, Carl Healy standing way up the green. 
right on the minimum marker. Corey Wedlock, Matt on the tee there, so we saw a fair bit of that in this morning's game. A lot of short ends. Corey, Corey Wedlock sticking to the one side of the rink, forehand, backhand. Just trying to get the same arc going, get a feel for the line. He's got working with that tailwind now. Bowl will be right behind this one. Yeah, it's a nice starter. It's a really good starter considering it's only the second end of the match. They uh, look like they're really enjoying themselves, the French. Having a good time out there, experiencing these beautiful greens here at Mudry Bar Bowls Club. Gorgeous greens. Look how they present on the live stream there. Great camera angle up and down the rink. Absolutely sensational here. The green keepers and the officials here have done a wonderful job. As Corey Wedlock goes close and nudges the jack. Yeah, so all four bowls on the same side of the rink for Corey Wedlock so far. He's just working on that rhythm up and down the same side. So you can see uh, Tommy here. Needs a bit of work off the wing. Well, that'll do. Tommy. Tommy Gunn. <laughs> Thomas Royer only picked up a bowl for the first time last week and sent a bowl down which is unbelievable. He knows how to play bocce, but how's the, how is the weight control, the eye, the feel? He's enjoying himself. Yeah, he, from the get-go, he was out on a nice line. He got a little bit of help off Corey on the way in, but, yeah, as we see, he's sitting out on a really nice line, giving it a chance, just trying to work off that wing bowl, and he's, bang, got the jack. So, a brilliant start by the French who have come to play here, Australia. Well, they just need to win. And they are in India. Watch and wait. And they thought they'd be the biggest French supporters right now. Be singing Les Marseillais. And Sheriff goes at it, knocks one of the French bowls away and comes across over the next rink. Yeah, probably the best option, Val, with the, the way the conditions are. Best way to maybe go direct, and that's what Aaron did, especially after having the back bowl. Aaron Sheriff was sensational this morning and he wants to be playing at his home club of Broadbeach tomorrow. Yeah. Big day today. They've done so well. They want to finish, finish off on a high today in this match against France. And then tomorrow, a whole new tournament starts. Well, there's Amory dished up here. Well, Amory Dumont, absolutely brilliant. Well, these two, Thomas and Amory, have started the day brilliantly. For the yeah. French. Yeah, Duke, what a good shot. Just trying to trail the jack or sit the bowl here, and he's played it perfect, but he's set up a, a nice target for Carl Healy. He'll be on the charge here. Maxime will have his work cut out for him against Carl Healy. Carl just resets himself on the, on the mat with a bit of movement in front of him. This mat probably the furthest back on the green. Big strike coming up here, forehand. He's gone big. He likes it. Carl Healy, what have we got? Perfect. Big, beautiful, huge. Yeah, per perfect strike. Took his time on that one. Big weight. Looking, well, looking for the split. No jack action was the key here. That shot essentially scores four, Baz. Two down, two up. Perfect split. Yeah, massive confidence booster for Carl Healy early on. Get a nice strike. Opposition's got about two and a half feet of room here. What can Maxime Foy conjure up here? He's looking good here, old Maxime. His line... He's played it well. ...is monumental. That's a great bowl. He nearly, oh, he's almost hidden it. Well, it's 
going to be enough it's for Carl to worry about in terms of not trying to take his nearest out. Ideally, you want to play the same bowl twice. You don't want to have to keep mixing it up. So, Carl, big weight forehand, looking for the outside of the last bowl. Well, he's going to collect on... Well, he doesn't collect. So, Maxime Fla, an opportunity to put a second in here. And go for it and put the French in front. What a delivery. I'm having a good close look at his technique. Side on. Let's have a look at where this ends up. Doesn't now, Amelie lo doesn't mind it too much. I think he's going to sit right on his own. Knock it away. And made two. I reckon he has. That is, I think, Aaron Sheriff has confirmed the two. Or are we going to measure? <laughs> going to be a little measure here. Okay, Val. I reckon this is one. Here we go. France currently holding one. Measure for two. That is a second. And they're in front. Well. After two ends. So Jack Roll coming up. Let's see what they decide to do. So... French had an enjoyable tournament here. I was talking to them before, Thomas. I'd only ever been to Australia once before. It was about 10 years ago. Does work in China. And Jack has gone cannoning into the ditch, so it'll be... An Australian Matt. Yeah. So it's back on Australia's lengths here. I think it'll be long into this breeze as they did the first end. Well, I'm really impressed with how the French have how the French have gone. Well, four bowls. Yeah. Well, yeah, four or five bowls out of their six were nearly perfect. So that's a pretty good sign early on. Good body language too, encouraging. Good, uh, good sign language there with, you know, how much weight to add and so on. So good communication from the French, French team. Just dropping short this yep. one here from Thomas. But I think the weight control. It's very easy when you when you first bowl on these greens to go into the ditch. And I know the first time I I sent down a bowl on a quicker green and back back home at Darabin, it's. Uh, those greens have been uh, have not been maintained for a while, so I'm a bit of a slow green specialist, Baz. But on a quick green, the weight control is so important, and the French have, have really got that. There's a reason why they're sitting sixth on this table. And four wins, three losses, they're above the ledger. Yeah, you can see their techniques are heavily relying on just you know, <coughs> tempo and touch. Um, and that's, you know, that's part of the technique and part of all the biomechanics. You've just got to... Rely on your natural feel, and that's where that comes into in the quick greens. Thomas Loyer. That's a nice shot there. Still shot away from Corey Wedlock. Corey Wedlock staying on the forehand. He's looking to add about six feet of weight. Is he going to get down? I'm not sure. Might get enough. Well, no. So not getting down in time that time. So currently 2-1 up to France and one up on the head so far. It's coming down on the backhand. Well, it's not bad. If it gets down now, just needs to run that out. So, just falling short. So, about four feet short on a good line in. And guess what, Val? Something that's happened to the last two afternoons. Yep. Cloud cover. Is happening again. 
And this bowl from Aaron Sheriff rocks into the French red bowl. Yeah, Frank Levé watching. Bravo, Max. Two shots. Yeah, you might be able to see on the screen there, just coming over a bit dark. The clouds have well and truly covered up the sun. And uh, hopefully there's uh, not much in it, but as we've seen the last few days, conditions always changing, whether it's the wind swirling. How can the French adapt to that? Well, there is a way in there, and that is the only way. Well, that's going to count for three shots here. So Aaron Sheriff, using the same equipment, can follow that one down. Backhand. Got about three feet to count here. Just needs to find a way in. Even if he works around his last bowl. Trying hard. Needs to slow down now. He does, but as the skips change over, well, it's the Europeans... I'd expect this in soccer, but this is this has been a red hot start from the Frenchman, and of course Baz. After this tournament, starting on the 11th of September, the day after this concludes, the World Champion of Champions from Rabina. So five clubs in action in the World Bowls Championships. Add another one, Rabina, straight after this event. Very excited for that. Karen Murphy and John O'Davis are going to be in action. And good luck to both players and all the competitors over at Rabina under new management. Club Helensvale taking over the licence there. and Baz, this is a fourth. The club's looking great. Certainly is. Yeah, Carl Healy. He needs to get one in here. And if he doesn't, there's an opportunity here for Maxime Foy to put in a fifth. And Carl Healy... Well, he's getting back nicely, Carl Healy. He Ch is, but it's not going to be enough. Just a yard over. Oh, back Carl to make a correction with his next. He just uh, needs to get a clear run in there because there's just a couple of bowls sort of on awkward angles, but the French need to be careful. They don't want to make a mistake either. No. Turn something up. Maxime Foix. He's coming around the back. Is he going to hit anything or is that... He's actually on fire. That is the boss. He's drawn the boss around that one. Oh, my God. Carl Healy, big shot here, four or five down. The one thing we're missing from this commentary is Henri Leconte. Oh, he's all over this to there, Carl Healy. He's got the weight. Does he have the weight? Or is this short? Well, Barry Lester, the French, have scored a five. There is stunned silence. At Marjorie Bar. And there's a lot of positives, though. If it's going to happen, you want it to happen early. You don't want to be dropping numbers near the finish when the game's on the line. So Aussies, Bearing in mind, they lost the mat, the French. But Yeah, the Aussies will be um, more than more than comfortable in coming back well and truly into this game early. Just um, it's one of those ends where it wasn't a clean path to the jack. And um, Aaron Sheriff, his first bowl was all over it. He played a great bowl. Coming in right onto the jack, he just connected with the French bowl. But to the French's credit, they played some really good shots there. Put them in the area and it was enough. It was enough to hold on for a five, which we really haven't seen in the no, of today. Any real big not numbers. Not at all. And uh, Marilyn, we are Bowls Australia, so we will be prioritising the Jackaroos. We do have a second stream as well with our partners at Gold Coast Tweed. They're doing a lot of the international matches. So if you'd like to watch some of those, they are available to you. Lee Schreiner watching on. Corey Wedlock on the backhand. Needs to um, get Aussies off to a good start here. So this has been a lightning start. <laughs> Lee Schreiner, nice major start. heck. Or heck, and then Lee Such, major heck. It's been a red hot start from the French. 7 1. And a 5. That's the biggest score I think we've seen in our streaming throughout this entire week so far, Barry. Yeah, I can't think of too many numbers so far. You're right, Val. But, um, well, Corey Wedlock's got an opportunity to put another one in for two here. Sure he will. He won't be far away. So, 
What can Corey conjure up here? Yeah, just something similar. Lost the lead battle to Thomas Royer last time out. It's a nice correction. Lovely shot. Two good bowls from Corey Wedlock. Really good reply. So, so Australia currently yep. sitting in a situation where they're staring down the barrel of a number as the French lead. Tommy, not quite getting in there this time. What has Amory got? And as we see... Majority of the bowls playing on that wide side. Seems to be the most favourable side. Aaron Sheriff, well, way, way too much room for this man. Yep, this could be where Australia can try and work their way into a comeback. By no means is, is this one over, but yeah, it's absolutely... They, they need to get moving, even though there is still 15 ends to go, including this. 7-1 is worrying. Yeah, three to Australia already. There's only yep. three balls played, so that's the ability of these players to be able to counteract. Lucas, a draw does not help getting into the finals. They must win. If they don't, they're done. So Australia, at the moment, how it sits, India are through. And exactly right. Nigel, early doors, first couple of ends have been a little bit loose. More so than usual for the Aussie boys, but they'll work their way back into it. They always do. Yeah, they've played a really good head so far. Aaron Sheriff on the mat again. And you're in, and, and it happens every game, Baz. There's always one or two bad ends that don't go your way. And as I said, you want it to happen the first couple of ends when you're just exactly. feeling your way into the game. And when you can work your way back into the match. Perfect. And look at Aaron the turn Sheriff. there from Aaron Sheriff. And a bit of a sigh of relief and saying, finally... Yeah, just sort of dropping his head a little bit late there on that one, that bowl, just turning in hard. See, from there, you're thinking it's probably going to finish on the right-hand side of the, the rink. It just absolutely Look screws in sideways. Right about there. And doesn't even... Oh, I think he might have got a touch. I'm not sure. So, Australia, nice response from after dropping a five. What has Maxime got? Now holding four. Maxime, his draw his game has been sensational. Sure has, and if you see his technique there, gets the bowl away beautiful, nice and low. Now, he's not on a bad line here either, but I do think it is going to dart underneath. Might be enough to get under for second, second oh. or third. So that's a nice response for the skip. Getting on the mat four downs, never fun. He's cut it back to two. So the French skip, so far, playing some good solid bowls. He's definitely helped out his team in this particular end. Al Healy, he's just under the line on this one. Let's have a look at the weight. It's going to be good weight. Jack High, just a couple of bowls under. So time for Maxime Foy. Just a bit of rink knowledge going on here, a bit of rink management. For me, it was always forehand. He's staying on the backhand. Forehand was opportunity to sit the shot bowl or trail the jack. He's trying to double up here on the backhand. And he's on a bit of a wider line than he was before. He needs to turn his own down, to cut it back to one. He might. He's done that. Oh, well, he's drawn second, I think, anyway. Yep, very close. So now Carl Healy to try and... Add in another for Australia and get them back on the board. They won the first end with a single, but it dropped a two and then a five. The temperatures just dropped a couple of degrees. Just a tad. Carl Healy does not want any contact on this French bowl. If he gets up, he can sit that out for two or three. He's just got the wrong side of it. I think it's still just the one to Australia. One kicked out. We're going to measure for the rest. Yeah, so go to the French bowl first and then back around to the Australian bowls. So. Two, Two. It is. So Carl Healy's last bowl made it. <coughs> and it is uh, actually borderline, I won't say the word cold, but it's actually freshened right up here. 
Bit of breeze still around. No sunlight as the clouds move in. So, Australia. Get back on the board. 7-3 in favour of France. After four. Thomas Royer, Amory Dumont and Maxime Fra. Holding sway at the moment. Not many people would have picked this. All of them really happy to give some information about French bowls beforehand and absolutely wonderful start for them. The Marjorie Bar Bowls Club could be witness to something special. I think it's special already, Val. I think it's great. Yeah. Um, you know, one bowling green in all of the country of France, and here they are out there having a red-hot crack against the Aussies. And we're seeing yeah. some rain falling in the distance. Definitely some rain coming out of those clouds, and hopefully it goes around us. Fingers crossed. That might be, that might be fairly interesting. Check the radar. Yeah, just a little bit of cloud. But um, Corey Wedlock, good leading there, one-on-one -on -one behind. Uh, they might be a little bit heading up a bit later. Be interesting to see what happens with that. Coming from the southwest... So, Aaron Sheriff on the backhand. He's got two and a half feet of room for the actual shot. But plenty of room to count. Just needs to hang on. It's going to run away on him, that one. Should be enough to count, though. So France leads Australia 7-3 on N5. Big number, five shots from the French. The third end as that comes into rest and sits for second. So Aaron Sheriff back on the mat looking to... Get his side back in the position where they can regain the ascendancy here, and he's just overdone it a bit. Yeah, just a yard heavy. Good, really good look at it though. Down and sit that uh, turnover, that shot bowl of Corey Wedlock's or trail the jack. But there's still a lot of room for the remaining players. Small correction required here, just a bit higher on the grass, a little bit of weight off. It was a very short end. It'd only be all of 23, 24 metres. And as we see, other than Corey Wedlock's front bowl, everything's sailing through. Yep, the French sitting on two seconds. It's a, it's a bit of a, a strategy of Carl Healy as skip, and we spoke about it before with uh, the Australian Open last year in the men's pairs. We saw it happen a bit. Carl doesn't mind bowling to a short end as the skip. For some people, it's T to T that can be your strategy. For some, it's something that's fairly short. The mat's right up. What has Carl Healy got? Lynn Thompson saying Thunder could be heading our way. Well, that's promising. Yeah, Carl all over the line. Probably four foot short there, five foot short. So just not quite reading it, that one. Perfect line, as I said. So what has Maxime Foy got? Well, he might be sitting the bowl and staying. He's staying and for second. He is, but he hits Corey's up a little bit closer. So just the one to Australia at the moment. Carl looking to add in number two, and he's after it straight away. Yeah, Carl Healy just wants to trail this jack around the corner, change that jack high setup. Well, it's going to be two. Started in, so an opportunity for Maxime. Yeah, to put himself 
back on top. He's on a tighter line. If he's got the weight, he's going to be in the ballpark here. Tell you what, Baz. He wants jack movement. I tell you what. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> he's played it well. Two to Aussies. So, game of millimetres. A French skip. He was into that. He was having a good little look at trying to trail the jack and sit the bowl. And all the intent was there. Just found the hole. They're playing aggressively, and I like it. And yeah. Look to our left, Baz. Those clouds. Well, it was absolutely beautiful before. The sun was everywhere. And now, all of a sudden, we may get some rain and some more drama. Yeah, we might, mate. You're right. But um, the Aussies, they know they've got a drop in their hand here. They're just trying to focus on getting some continuity here, bowl after bowl, packing them in there like they did in this direction previously. And when they held four or five... Uh, Corey Wedlock right down the middle there. He's uh, He started off pretty well as Corey. Solid leading. Yep. And now Thomas Royer, can he go with him? It's always good if you're close and you're covering the jack up. It just changes the whole look of the head. I know Carl Healy would be happy with that. Of can course, he? a big thank you, sorry, Bass, to yeah. everyone here at Mudgery Bar. They've been great throughout this tournament. Players with rave reviews. And from us here as well, a big thank you to Wendy Morell and Fiona Hall. As Corey Wedlock, look at that, Baz. Yeah, right down the middle. So no targets for the opposition. If they're going to get the shot here, they're going to have to earn it on the draw. Can't afford to um, go running at this head, being such a narrow target. He's taken a pretty wide line here, has Thomas Royer. Very and close. He's not far off at all here. Very close. What an effort that is from the French lead. Cuts it down to one. Corey Wedlock again taking the ascendancy at the lead battle. End six <coughs> of 18. Of course, two hours and 15. This is the final sectional round. Aaron Sheriff close as well here. He is. Drifts through, so still one to France, but that's a really good home. So now it's time for... Amory. So Aaron Sheriff's bowl there, as we see, you can see the full face of that logo, large logo. And look what angle that bowl's finished on. Just indicates how sharp that turn is. You can see so this bowl coming in from outside the peg, outside the rink, working its way all the way back. Well, Amory... Has almost found the line. He just needed a little bit more weight on that. That was a great effort. Yeah, really good effort. That line's perfect. Just needed two feet of weight. That's correct. Carl Healy on the comments. He's from Cabramatta. Does his bowling out there. Very, very big club at Cabramatta. What has Aaron Sheriff got? He needs to clear the front. He rocks into it. And that's probably enough for two. Maybe. Yeah. Still one. So France went up 7-1. Australia have secured a couple of twos from the last two ends. So they look to get the lead back that they had after one. What has Amélie Dumont got? Oh, he's got to try and disturb this head, I believe. Try and shift that shot ball off the jack. Or just work off that wing ball. He's not a mile away here. Will he actually get down the jack? Wow. Almost did. Well, they are a whisker away. Absolutely flirting with these heads. Yeah. Haven't been far away on many occasions. So it's a game of cat and mouse sometimes. You want to score another... Multiple here, Australia. They want to get another two or three, but they're mindful that the French don't mind just having a little weighted shot every now and then to these heads. So the last thing Australia wants to do is put a bowl between that wide French bowl and the shot bowl of Corey Wedlocks. They don't want to build any targets. So Corey 
Wedlock with the shot bowl. First bowl of the match. Still lying. Just goes to show how important it is a lead to get that first bowl close. And Carl Healy's just trying to add to the count. He's going to drop under. So now... And drop short. So what can Maxime dish up? He's been close on many occasions. Just to wrestle some sort of the momentum back here for the French. So we do apologise, of course, that wouldn't be used to live streaming. So it is going to happen occasionally when players do stand in front of the cameras. So this one is coming in. Now, Amory is interested, but the line was good. The weight, about a metre short. Yeah, discussions here. Ideally, Carl Healy does want to swap hands, just swapping and changing. But if he can find a yard of weight and a clean run, he can score another here. And then Aaron Sheriff's probably deliberating over not wanting to set up a bigger target for the French skipper. Okay, so weight it is. A little bit of d danger, but all in all, yep. Carl can get this right. He can. He's close here. Carl Healy. Very close. That is massive. Carl, well done. What a strategic call from Aaron Sheriff. Half half of the blue bowl through the nearest French bowl. And now all of a sudden on a live score, Australia back in front. So forehand it is, playing away. Look at this. From their third shot bowl. Half the blue through the red. Oh, that is executed to perfection so from forehand. Carl Healy. Yeah, the reason it was forehand is because it took the shot bowl out of play, whereas backhand, if they had went backhand and quick, they could have flicked their own shot bowl out. So very strategic call from Aaron Sheriff. Took his time, provided Carl Healy with the information needed. So uh, now, what's the go for Maxime Foy? Where well, does he go here? Does he go big and try and clear them all out? Absolutely. He's got uh, one back, back at the uh, left-hand side of the screen there. Playing. He's gone big. He's pretty close He's here. He's not far. Maxime Foy. Needs solid contact. Oh, he got one out. One out. Was not far. He just needed to clear those front bowls or the front bowl. So is that a three to the Aussies? It is. So Australia regain the ascendancy. Have they broken the French resistance? Brilliantly done by Carl Healy. Pulled out a ripper. Yeah, that's the experience of having a guy like Aaron Sheriff in the middle for you. He just basically said, Carl, just give us a second here. I'm going to have a look at this. The way the game's set up at the moment, why not? Still pretty early days. I back you in to get this. And he did it. Half the bowl through the nearest French bowl. And Corey Wedlock backs it up with a nice lead bowl. 18 inches short down the line. Once again... Corey just finishing in front of the jack, just changes the way the head starts to look when the jack's covered. As those clouds get closer and closer, but will they avoid us? Who knows? Okay. Little touch of the jack there from Thomas Royer. Another touch out for Tommy. And put it in a good home as well. So that's the thing that's surprising, or not surprising the most, is just how the French are not only... Obviously trying to score, but giving their bowl a chance, putting them in good areas. So they might lose this lead battle potentially here, but having that back bowl there just means that bowl still got some value. It's alive. If the jack was to be moved, it comes into play. As we see here, no marking around. Giving this bowl a chance. Close again. Through the gap. And it could be that... As I said earlier, cat and mouse or first in best dressed. The Aussies, I like that call from Carl Healy. Maybe come down and trail it yourself. Get in there first. Really nice line by Aaron Sheriff. 
He's asking it to go. Well. Cover this jack up. Go, it will. Ah, perfect, Aaron Sheriff. So that's a case of offense or defense. He could have went into defense mode, covered the back red, but he played an offense, offensive draw, got in there first, and now all of a sudden the French have really got their work cut out. Oh, and uh, he realized. Yeah, Corey Wedlock's helping us out with that. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, I just had a chat with the players before the game. As this comes down, well, that's opened it back up. Amory. He, scored, he might have scored one out of oh, that. I think he has. Wow. From three down to potentially one up. Amory Dumont. Sensational. Another look at Carl Healy's big drive from the previous end. Oh, there it is. I'm Amory sure. Dumont. He got to be in the area, and he was. I reckon he might have done something good there. So Aaron Sheriff is going to try and come around. Beautiful weight. How good a home yep. is that now by Aaron Very Sheriff? Very good. So can the French get back on the board? They've lost the last three ends. Just the one single scored in this match. So when teams are scoring, they're scoring big. So, case of trying to re repeat the dose here. Get another one close. Even trail the jack for three. I tell you what, this is so close. Amory Dumont just over the top. If it stays up, very good home. Well, the French are peppering, peppering are. the jack. They've been millimetres away on a couple of occasions here. And I tell you what, the Aussies still have their work cut out for them despite being ahead. The French, in any sport that they play, we know that they do not die wondering. They went 2-0 down. In the World Cup final last year, got it back to penalties. So, Carl Healy on the forehand, looking for the French Red Bowl there at 9 o'clock. He's going to miss high. Can he catch the other one, though? Well, that's just as good for now. So, four of the five bowls are Australians. But they don't have the shot bowl, from what I can see there. It's the French bowl at 9 o'clock. Carl Healy can pick whatever he waits, whatever weight he likes here if the French skip fails. I need to get another one in here. And Maxime Fla just has to be up. And he doesn't promote. So it's around the mark. Would like a little bit better. So now Carl Healy... Aaron Sheriff is having a good look there to make sure what the actual situation in the head is. I think it, for me, it's one to the French. Carl Healy on the draw, backhand. <laughs> he gets the jack. He can make two or three down the line. It's on a good arc. He's close here. Needs to go with it if he gets it. Mighty attempt. Very good attempt from Carl. So now, Maxime Flo, really big bowl in the context of this. Can he add in another? We believe it's one to France here. Yeah, he's on a fairly tight line. Yeah, but the weight, I think, might be enough to get him there. Just going to pull up. It is... Doesn't want to promote. So they're going to measure. Are we going to be level? What do you think, Val? Who have you got? I reckon one to France. Oh. One to Australia, Aaron Sheriff reckons. And they've called the umpire. Yeah, so um, I guess there's a, obviously a bit of a language barrier and a bit of um, just a slight lack of probably game knowledge from the Frenchman. Uh, Aaron's indicated it's one to Australia and the Frenchman just wanted maybe a second opinion. So 
they're calling an umpire it's just part of their development just to make sure and as we see there no touch so one it will be to australia So one to the Aussies, and they extend the lead. It's their biggest of the match. Four ends in a row now to the Australians. They send an ominous sign, as we've just had some confirmation that rain is coming. And it looks like it's coming on pretty hard. So really exciting in that. Plenty happening. At one stage, it looked like the French had one shot, and then Aussies won the measure. Carl Healy looking to sit the ball. In the end, didn't need to, so <coughs> the French just losing out on that measure on that occasion. Corey Ledlock sticking to the backhand. Nice open up. He'll be pretty happy with that. So Tommy, the French lead. He's uh, he's done the job here on the backhand. Look at that wide drawing arc. Right outside the peg that came in from. The wind just slowly dropping away at the end of the day here. Shadows of the clouds coming over. We may have heard just a little little bit of thunder in the area. It's Corey Wedlock plays a similar bowl, not quite getting inside the shot bowl, but nice weight. You see all the other games going on in the background. All the teams trying their best to get as many wins up as they can to try and advance through to the finals. As we get a toucher from Tommy. So, the Frenchman doing his job there, holding shot, winning the lead battle. Aaron Sheriff, well, he's got a nice angle here to the jack. Little toucher, try, try and remove the jack off the bowl. He's played it perfect. Aaron Sheriff slid in behind it and not set up a target for the opposition. That's the key with that result. Aaron Sheriff, he's not only got the shot, but he hasn't made the target hardly any wider. As we see on the replay, beautiful weight control. This was in behind the jack. So, one to Australia so far. As this ball comes in. We hear a big grumbling from the crowd, or oh, from the cloud. What an effort. Good effort there from the Frenchman. They are peppering. They're coming close, but the Australians at the moment got the they've got the answer. Aaron Sheriff, he's chasing after this one. Can he repeat the dose? As we sort of just start to edge our way nearer to four o'clock. Shadows start playing a little bit of havoc with the green speed, dropping the temperature. So we'll no doubt see the odd bowl start to fall short as players adjust to the green. The grass just starting to stand up as it cools off. Well, I've had my jacket on for about half an hour. Val's reaching for his. So as the temperature just slowly drops, green speed will too. Looking for some jack action. We're not too far away. So Australia holding one, but they are down two on the tee. Will Carl Healy look to cover the tee early or change the shape of his head for the better? Apparently it lies pretty well. Dead, dead draw rod right on the top of the jack would be the best result or go to the tee. Forehand it is. 
So, Carl, can you put down here? The rain looks like it is coming. Doesn't look like it's anything too long. So, two seconds for France. They have the bowl at three o'clock and just underneath the shot bowl there. That's pretty well protected. They've got a couple in there. They can afford to look for this shot bowl. Jack move and be their worst result. So forehand it is. It's not bad. Depending on the weight now, it's a pretty good line. Not going to make it. I'm just trying to scour across the other rinks and just see if this is starting to... This cloud just starting to show the green speed slow up a bit. A few short bowls across the rinks. It's quite common around this time of day. As Carl Healy adds more weight and gets one back to the tee. So well done, Carl. That's that job done. One down isn't too bad for the French, but they do want to score also. They don't want to drop a bigger score. Any jack movement might be against them. So, Maxime Foy. He's played this pretty good. He has. What has he got here? What has he got here? Just runs in. He's not been far away, I tell you that. One down again. So, the Australian lead moves to three. They lead at 10-7. They've dropped only two ends in this match, but one of which was a five. It looks as though they might be making their move now. They've been a lot more consistent. This has been a good game. Yeah. Uh, there hasn't been many uh, times there the French haven't been in that in the end. There's a, like right there, they had a bowl close to the jack. Uh, they held shot the lead battle. Uh, there's been a few missed opportunities, halving jacks or finding some holes. But, yeah, they've been around the mark. It's been a fairly consistent performance by the French so far. Aussie's obviously very consistent team, very consistent players. As we see, Corey Wedlock just put another one right near it. He's been very solid so far. Certainly has. What can Thomas Roy conjure up here in response? Now, it's fair weight, but I tell you what, I tell you what. Hits the jack, hits Corey's bowl, and the jack has gone into the ditch. You don't see that very often. A lead running into the jack with that yep. speed. So now we're drawing to the ditch. Corey Wedlock looking to find the hole between the two bowls and have the right weight. He's played this pretty good. He's watching it. And wow, it, it just falls, falls in. in. What an effort. Well, this is going to be some fun. Always love seeing draws to the ditch. Let's see how these players can adapt to these mudgy greens. Or mudgy green, I should say. Yeah, they've been sensational. All reports from chatting to some players over lunch break. They're wrapped with these greens. And I'll tell you what, Tommy's going to go bang and sit for two. Thomas Royer, and he's gone even closer. He's having a lot of fun out there, and I don't blame him. Yeah, he's just giving him a chance. He's got the jack with his first, and he's sat his clo uh, shot bowl with his next. The class of Aaron Sheriff. This is one of his fortes, drawing to the ditch. Can he draw the shot? Well, it's going to be close. Could be. Oh, it might just be for Aaron Sheriff, a one down for the French. They go at weight. Go with weight and try and get rid of this Aaron Sheriff bowl. What do they draw around? Who knows? Amaury Dumont. He's very close here. He's not far away at all. He's going to make a connection. He's got, oh, oh, you're kidding. You are <laughs> kidding me. What an effort. Millimetres in per, in, from perfection. He only needed probably a quarter of an inch less grass. And he had that bowl square. Aaron Sheriff, can he double up? 
Of course he can. Oh, Just no. sliding in. Well, what an effort, Aaron Sheriff. There's nothing quite like watching bowlers draw to the ditch. Yeah, it's a massive skill, and it's a quite often a, a big pressure bowl drawing to the ditch throughout various stages of the game. So enjoyable. Now, this is the, the targets. The target's not there as the bowl just gets cannoned into our rink. Yeah, wow, that came from nowhere. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. The target's much. Um, narrower than it, what it yep. used to be, Val. But I'm trying to. I just lost sight of the French toucher. Can't remember. It's the one sitting on the blue bowl or the one up the front. This is not a bad attempt for shot here. Not at all. Amory Dumont again right in the area. <laughs> wow. No, the skips make the changeover. Let's have a look at this. So he just had to make connection with that blue bowl. And we thought he'd done enough, but he only got the side of it. And it didn't go far at all. Yeah, any thicker, they could have been holding three shots. Yep. But I reckon we might see, do we see them? Maybe I think there's an opportunity where they can. Maybe do they cannon in and let's see what Carl Healy can do. He's going to try and add in another. The front bowl there is the toucher. So Baz, the one sort of to the left of the... Number. Rink marker. Yeah. yeah, so the French here, they're going to have three out of the four bowls closest yep. to the jack, but the, they don't have the winner, the boss. And the problem is it is hidden away behind two French bowls. So They might um, go looking for that cannon or yep. they try and dead draw it. For me, I think the easiest shot is just play weight towards yep. the cannon, see what happens. Well, so Maybe see what happens after this. Get another one in, in the head. It's going to miss height. Yep. And he's gone, yeah, he's gone pretty big. So there's the intent there. As we see the next door, Jack, just come on to our rink. Cal Healy, well, he needs another one. He wants to at least get third or fourth for me, beating that front one. Well. He needs to hurry, Cal Healy. No, not on this occasion. Okay. So it's still on. A, a number can be made here. Front cannon. Much tighter line. Well. Close here, Val. Maxime makes connection. He's played it. And he's got it. That is absolutely magnificent. That is a three to the French. And they're meeting down the rink. Massive high five. Oh, they're getting around their skip. Maxime flat. All of a sudden, 10 all. Wow. Yeah, he played this perfect weight. He adjusted. He brought the line in. Stayed true with the weight. And then, bang, clips half the front bowl through the cannon. And that's a classy shot from the Frenchman. My word. So, the, we've played nine ends, Baz. The French have only won three. But a two, a five, and a three. When they've scored, they've scored big. And that was a brilliant end. Yeah, Australia couldn't do much else other than try and get another one around it. But still, a high degree of difficulty. A single bowl target for the Frenchman to make a three. And he halved it. He did enough at that weight. Maxime Foy playing a blinder. And those multiples, or, or what I like to call them, clangers... Yeah, they, they can really hurt you, as you see in the background, that cloud cover. And for now, it's staying away in terms of rain. But we are covered in some really low cloud. Yep, well, Dave Anderton, sacre bleu. That is what he said on the comments. And it's how the Australians might be feeling right now because, as we said off the top, win and in. A win gets him into the quarterfinals. A tie, as what it is now, does not. But this French trio are proving a thorn in the Australian side. And Maxime Foy has converted a sensational shot. Jesse Cattell watching on. Great to have your company, Jesse. Come on, Aussies.
Corey Wedlock getting the shot with his last there. Nice correction. Just had to find three feet. Beautiful line. So it's up to the French again. Yeah, they got to try and find a way to pack the head again. Before. Maybe they just keep going for the ditch. <laughs> yeah, well, it was, um, as I said, a high degree of difficulty just to get that single bowl target, that contact, but they've got some dodging to do here, and they've done well. Oh, Amaury Dumont again. Oh. They are playing some sensational bowls here. Yeah, some good touch being played, on, on especially this free-running green. Aaron Sheriff just slide on round past Aaron, uh, Corey Wedlock's front bowl. He's not far away here. He's played an absolute cracker. Aaron Sheriff, is, is that enough? The boss, it's fallen out. I have no clue. Yeah, might attempt. Set up a good head now for the Aussies. Frenchman needs to be careful. He doesn't want to turn these blue ones up. They're persisting with the backhand. I think it should be forehand, just turning the... Shot bowl over and getting getting through to the tee, but sometimes you just got to keep it simple, stick to the hand, you know. You can smell the rain coming. Just needs a clear run now. The weight looks pretty good here. Just received word that it might be missing us. Yeah, I don't think... I've looked at the radar and it does seem to be at the moment. I'm not going to jinx us. No, we're good. I just jinxed us. You have. Aaron well, Sheriff, I'm, he I'm, has four, or at least two, three or four seconds here. Looking for the shot bowl. It's going to be tight. Well, he doesn't want the other French bowl. Which he's got, but it's no harm done. Now, plenty of options for Carl Healy yep. here. Jack back. He's got all the back stuff out to the right side. He can swing down his backhand, sit the shot bowl. How are you feeling if you're the India triples team right now? Because they eagerly await this. They defeated Australia in the opening match. They've lingered and fought, and they sit in second with the bye. They can't control what happens now. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's out of their control. They can. Um, I can't spot them anywhere if they're still here watching. They might have. But... Yeah, it's out of their control. Just go about their normal day and what it will be will be. This one from Maxime Foy is under. Yeah, no, he won't be disappointed that. Probably in a few different minds what to do. Probably fearful of taking his own out. But Carl Healy, this is fairly regimented. Well, he's kicky. Marry me. Well, that's a first, surely, for live stream TV in Lawn Bowls history. Kiki, will you marry me? <laughs> Tommy, the French lead there, holding up a little sign for the camera. I wonder who Kiki is. Obviously, try and find that out. Do some digging after the game. So, Carl Healy, backhand. Arriving weight, looking for the shot bowl. Now, we do believe that the French are holding at the moment. Yeah, they're holding the one. Yep. Maybe it's better forehand. Carl Healy can swing forehand, put the jack where Corey's wedlock standing. He makes four or five. All the shot bowl clean. He's gone for it. Carl He's Healy. Close. Not far away at all. Needs to clear. Doesn't clear the front bowl. And... Viva la France again. They get their fourth end of the match, their first single, and more importantly, the lead. This is a worrying sign for the Australians. The French have not gone away. Carl Healy just missing, clipping the front there. Mighty attempt. Inch wider. Bowl or jack. Aussies did everything right there, put plenty around, but the one French bowl remained. So back to back ends for the French team. 
Everyone looking to the skies. They see all that cloud cover and thick thunderstorm grey cloud. Apparently it is missing us, though. But at this stage, yes, it hasn't arrived here at Mudry Bar Bowls Club. So, Thomas Royer. Not a bad home. Yeah, it's handy. It's only a yard from the jack. Good afternoon to everybody watching wherever you are around the world. Because the French, you are in... Well, if you're French and you're a French fan... You're loving what you're seeing. If you're Australian, you're nervous. Yeah, Corey Wedlock staying on that consistent side of that rink, just falling short two feet. Really nice start up. Probably could be in the Frenchman's way. He's been solid this game. Corey Wedlock always in the area as we see a bowl just trickle into yeah, the Frenchman's way. Yep. I'd like to know if Kiki is watching... Because if so, it could be the very first proposal we've had on Ringside Live. So our man Tommy. Thomas Royer locks it and stays around. So he's got two bowls in pretty good areas. Only picked up a pole for the first time last week. Yeah, that's right, Val. The French... Uh, very, very green country when it comes to bowls. He's checking his phone. Developing all the time. As Corey Wedlock, well, he's been rock solid as Corey. Another great bowl. Very impressive draw bowling. And the French skip. He's monitoring this head, having a good look. I want to know if she said yes. I'll ask after the match. So it'll be forehand here from the Frenchman. Working down under the front lead bowl of Tommy's. Trying to nudge that shot bowl out or move the jack. And he's going to be under one of his first deliveries on that forehand yeah. in this direction. It's a slightly wider side as Alan Ryan finishes up for the day. With a nice victory over there, 21-6 over Botswana. Big win. Brody Turner watching from Toulouse. Toulouse, sorry. As Aaron Sheriff. Oh, brilliant this shot. One in, that's a really good shot. So, three down. Here the French. As Amory Dumont. That's uh, in the south of France, isn't it? I've heard of that. Yes. Okay. Big bowl required here. Currently holding three of the Aussies. Now, Maxime He's Fla close here. likes this. Amélie Dumont. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> He's got it in for third. He's been millimetres off on a few occasions here. Yeah, mighty effort. Great weight. Good, good uh, area to be in. Just not getting any, anything full or even half. He just quartered that nearest bowl of Corey Wedlock's. Aaron Sheriff, can he repeat the dose? Get another one in there. Fluff off his own. And a toucher. Not quite, but really good shot from Aaron Sheriff. Great double. Class play. Handshake from Carl Healy. Handshakes all around. Aussies with four bowls inside two feet. Really trying to apply the pressure to the French skip. As we see there, good head of bowls for the Aussies. With the one French bowl in there, that red bowl, just at the back of the jack there. What can the French skipper do here? So Maxime Flat. He's on a good line. He's got the right weight. He's going to be close here. Well, Amokhi likes it. Maxime, again. Wow. I have no idea if he's got it or not. Have to touch it to the French skip. Two down to Kiki. So there it is, marry Kiki, me. marry me. It's the second time he's uh, playing for his country at a World Championships in Lawn Bowls and doing marriage proposals on the live stream camera. So that's a first for me. 
First for ringside, I reckon. That's multitasking at its best, trying yep. to concentrate. Here we go. And so do marriage proposals. We might see it coming up. Here is Thomas Roy, Kiki, marry me. Now, I <laughs> and the massive smile on his face while he does it. Unbelievable. You're seeing it all. We've seen magpies dancing around earlier on the rink. Now we're seeing the French. And we will get to the bottom of this if this proposal has been successful or not. Carl Healy looking that for, for that sure. cannon. Blue bowl on the way in of Aaron Sheriffs. He wants that through the French bowl. He's played it perfect. Oh, wow. Carl Healy. What a great shot. Monumental. And that'd be two. Oh, at least two. So it's forehand here. So Carl Healy, cannon lines up, one down, needs bowl through bowl. Blue up onto the red, gets that, plays it perfect. Wow. Carl Healy, great call from their Aussie teammates. And now the French, they've got a, a pretty good shot on. So the front bowl, or the front red bowl that's sitting just off the shot bowl, they need to get that through the split. So forehand through the two blue bowls, red through the two blue bowls with weight. Here he comes. Maxime Foix, he's not far away at all. Missing under. I oh, thought Carl he was Healy. close. So Carl with an opportunity to, well, he's got the Aussies back in front on a live score. Now he's coming up the green Yeah, great shot, Carl Healy. His country really needed that one. Couple down, uh, sorry, one down to a couple up. I like it for three, but <coughs> tough to to pick exactly how far away that French ball is with the ball in its way. As the sun comes back out, Carl Healy backhand. So the sun peeks its way through again. Carl Healy looking. Looking to ensure the sun shines for Australia. And it does. That'll be a couple. So, confirmed by Aaron Sheriff. The lead changes once again, Baz. Yeah, Carl Healy, massive shot in the context of the match. It's starting to get into the second, well into the second half of this match. And they needed a multiple there, did Australia. And Carl, as I continue to say, Val, if you can't get them every time, get them when they matter. And that's exactly what he did then. I'm going to try when Thomas Royer comes down this end, see if I can get confirmation of who Kiki is and if she has responded to the proposal. And if she has, then, well, we can celebrate. Corey Wedlock just going about his business here. And the famous saying from Ryan Bester, front end will win you matches, back end will determine by how many. And... Corey Wedlock continues to just to put him into the area, in around the jack, around that sort of two-foot mark. As we see, he's done it again. Just weight of numbers, that's all you can do. Opportunities will come and go. You've got to try and take him as much as you can. And Corey Wedlock, well, he's had a free run on that wide side, and he's playing well. So Carl Healy has put down a massive bolt. But Thomas Royer. Oh, mighty attempt. Oh, Great reply. Very good effort. Good reply. One to Corey Wedlock, I believe. And winning the tee, France so far. The way they play that attacking style of bowls, the French. That's a big win so far, getting the first one to the tee. This is Corey Wedlock, once again, just in good rhythm down there on this backhand. Not quite getting the connection, but another another good bowl around that two, two and a half foot mark. And when the skip gets on the mat, whether it be France or Australia, it's one thing you always want, and that's the majority of the bowls. You want to outnumber your opposition in the head, so it creates more opportunities. So far, Corey's helping out his country for that particular reason as Tommy is looking for this jack. Thomas Royer, he's got the jack and he's got two shots with it. Well, 
had a little bit of heat on that one, but gave it a chance and, and he was rewarded. Now he's got the two bowls inside that two and a half foot mark. Baron Sheriff doesn't need many more invitations with room like that. Oh, what a cracker here. And Omar right on the money. Yeah, nice shot from Aaron Sheriff. Offline Jack. Ditch to ditch. And put it inside 18 inches. So the French now, they might go searching for this. Always on the attack. Do they try and build ahead first or just start looking for this shot bowl? Do have the tee if the jack goes flying out of bounds or moving around the rink. Owen Lockett saying this is a great game. It actually, it really is. This is one of the best ones that we've had on Ringside Live throughout this week. As Amaury Dumont puts one behind on a band home from the Frenchman. Yeah, it's a really good home, actually. That's a great way to just uh, arrive, sit the bowl or trail the jack. And if you don't get what you're after, finishing a good home. But Aaron Sheriff just needs to try and double up here. Ideally pass the jack, but at least try and get another one in there. He's close here. Yeah, he's got it in. Can he cover the jack? Well, it's pretty good. Great shooting, Aaron Sheriff. Now, that does... We'll see Maxime definitely want... bigger weight, won't we, Val? I'm... Well, I think he was saying there... I'm already, or Maxime, to try and sort of land in and sit. Well, my translator app just can't pick it up from here, if that's what he was saying. I've got the, the app out, reached right out to see exactly what he was saying. The translator came back with, um, sorry, can't hear it. And I'm already Dumont. Well, all of a sudden... Decisions here for the Aussies. They find themselves a couple down at the back, but holding a couple on the head. So these are the ones where if the French do go chasing this jack and put it in the ditch and you've tried to put another one in there, that's where the decision-making has to be premium as Val goes for a bit of a walk to find out who Kiki is. Val, just having a chat with Thomas about the little message, the marry me message. Okay, Carl Healy for me. He'll be just trying to cover that back bowl, that red back bowl of France. Slide on round. He's played it pretty well, has Carl Healy. Might even get the boss out of this. Well, that's a great shot. Carl Healy, back-to-back -back bombs. And... Now Australia holding a really good three. As we see there, Carl just trying to get round that bowl of Aaron Sheriffs. And he nearly draws a side resting toucher. So the French here, they'll be after some jack movement. So Baz, so I can confirm that Kiki is Thomas Royer's girlfriend. Val, if the jack gets out of there, yep. I'll tell you what. Not far. He My almost goodness. Got it, Maxime Foy. Wow, heart in your mouth kind of stuff. Australia holding three, but the French skip was millimetres from picking up that jack and taking it back for three or four. Wow. He's going to have another opportunity too. Now, yes, I can confirm it is Thomas's girlfriend. And I said, let us know if we get a yes. And he said, I think she's seen it. Oh, you can't put a bowl in a better spot. Well, For a few reasons there, Carl Healy not only has blocked up the jack, but he's going to make the French skip play another type of shot. And that's what you want to do. You want to force your opposition into playing different shots. So it's going to have to be forehand with bigger weight now. Maxime Foy. Looking to open this head up or get the jack back somehow. Huge bolt in the context of this match. He's, he's under. under. And Australia make their move. That is a three. And they lead it by four now, Baz. Yeah, game of millimetres. French skipper just missing with his first. Made a huge difference. 
as we see the Aussies here, they know they've just got to try and finish strong now. Keep packing them in there. Corey Wedlock's front end pressure has been great. The French have been up for it. So just for now, just talk about their learnings from the game so far, where they can keep playing at a high level and nullify the opposition. 15-11 and possibly an engagement. What a great match this has been. As we head into N13, we have marked the two-thirds of the way through. And Australia have made their move. They've won seven of the, or sorry, eight of the 12 ends so far. France have been absolutely brilliant. Corey Wedlock, full hand. Jack length, about 34 metres. Great opener. Just that consistent draw bowling from Corey. Never very rarely outside a couple of feet from the jack. And Tommy, the lead, oh, he's up for the challenge, just falling short, but still a competitive reply from the Frenchman. Corey Thomas. switching to the backhand. Yep. Good reply from Thomas Hoy. Corey. Well, this is going to come behind. It's going to be useful, that's for sure. Yeah, that's a great change over for Corey because he hasn't played a bowl on the back end this direction. He's achieved a couple of things there, a back bowl, but also the tee. And that's the go. If you're not getting the shot, you've got to look at what reward your bowl has. And he's managed to pick up the back bowl, cover the tee if need be for later as the French lead slides on by. Good, good speed just to be there, but just under the line. I've been warned, Baz, that maybe in 20 minutes the storm could be building and, oh, yeah, it's coming from northern New South Wales. Yeah, it just keeps coming in from the west the last few days, late afternoon storms, that's sort of getting into into sort of spring and the warmer months now. And we saw I saw this morning um, out, out uh, going for a walk. It was quite bright at sort of 5.30, 20 to 6, so it's... Definitely, the season is changing. Sun's up earlier. So, Amélie Dumont, he's going to come around the back as well. So, he's a Patonk champion, a silver medalist at the uh, European Games in the mixed fours of Patonk. Aaron Sheriff having a little... Jog after this one. He's got good weight. He could sit that French bowl out. Well, just finding the gap. Might be enough for a counter, though. Lovely weight control from Aaron Sheriff. I'm not sure if he's been rewarded with a counter. It's going to be close for second shot there. Pretty good head of bowls forming. Corey Wedlock, as I've said a few times now, never very far away. He's doing his job. Creating some some heads for his teammates. Now Amelie Dumont's just motoring on through. He'll end up where his last did, so there's things to work with, but the problem is those front couple are blocking things off. So now it's up to Maxime Foy to try and rectify this for the French. And Carl Healy to try and really put the foot on the accelerator. For the Australians. There we go. Thank you, Corey Wedlock. Just having a chat to the Frenchman for us. Not only has our, the French lead just picked up a bowl for the first time recently, but they find themselves playing on TV or live streaming for the first time as well. So it's great of them to be conscious of that and stay clear of the, the camera. As Carl Healy just slides on past. A 
Yeah, it's a bit of a vulnerable vulnerable position is the French front bowl. They don't want to take that out. I think it will be weight from the skipper trying to... Yeah, it is weight, but he's just high. Of course, we know the Australians have just got to win this match. And they go through to the quarterfinals. The French have given them a mighty, mighty scare. Looking Omar, good, Carl. He likes this, does Omar? It is going to Same drift bowl. through. So, <coughs> something massive required for Maxime Foy. Down by two here. It has to be forehand if it's yep. two because there's a consolation. If you're high, you do sit the second shot bowl. And if you're tight, you sit the shot bowl. So there's more options, definitely forehand. Look to turn your closest bowl in for shot. But if you're under or high, you've got other options. That's what he's gone for. So he's out on a nice line. And he's been millimetres away before. Looks to be quick for me. But if he is high, he might take the second bowl out. It's which coming. He's done. Yep. And has it stuck around? It could have. It's stuck around. It has. That is one... And Maxime wow. Fla. Well, he hasn't been Fla away. And he's continued. I'll stop now. I tried it. Didn't work. So that bowl. A look uh, of disgust from Lachlan next to me. That bowl, um, yeah, that was that was motoring. I'm, I, look, I don't know if that's what he was intending to be that heavy, but to be out there hitting that wing bowl to get it fat and flop back uh, and get shot out of it well. A little bit fortunate there from the Frenchman. But yep. Well, they are, they're they hanging around. Yeah, no doubt. Like that cloud cover, cover at the moment. It's just hanging around. And it's pretty impressive for a few players out there that are just taking up the game. So... 15 to 12. Wedlock, Sheriff and Healy are being pushed. All they need to do, reminding everybody, is win. India are watching this with bated breath because they need the Australians to lose for their chances of triples glory to be maintained. And we may get more drama with some... Precipitation, who knows, Baz? Yeah, it's looking ugly. Uh, to Corey Wedlock, he's stringing in a few solid ends together here, really forcing some pressure onto the French. As we see the lead there, just trying to get the shot back. Finishing heavy. Might have got one right near the tee. Never know if that comes into play later or not, but the Aussies will be looking for a multiple here. And get a multiple here. Just create a bit more breathing room. Feel a bit more comfortable about things to heading into the last couple of events. As Corey Wedlock just does what he does best. Yep. He's had a really good game, Corey Wedlock. And just the ability to cover up the jacks being the key for me. And hit that centre line. And we're finding already, especially with the last game Alan Ryan played, the, the two games we've covered in this direction today, the north-south direction, this side has been the more favourable side to play on. And uh, I'm sure players will be taking some notes from there. The ocean side, for me, north-south, anywhere up the coastline is always the wide side. Anywhere on the ocean side. Most greens across the Gold Coast. <coughs> As Aaron Sheriff plays the western side, you can see there's, the turn's just not as sharp. Much flatter finish there, but Aaron Sheriff just out of the count, one yard of weight, and he'll be all good to go. Things are getting dark, no they doubt. Are. We can hear the rumblings of thunder. It's 
going to be fairly full on if it does hit, I reckon. This one from Amelie Dumont is... Oh, that helps. She says it rolled it in. Oh, it wasn't far away from rolling it into shot. Yeah, I believe it's two to Aussie. Yep. To the Aussies. Another flop of that bowl, and who knows? But who knows how much longer we get before the rain does hit, if we can actually get this match finished in time. Aaron Sheriff, what a shot this is. Just a slide in behind. See exactly where Australia needed a bowl. If uh, the French go on the hunt for that jack, Aaron Sheriff's got a good bowl there now. So just a, a little insight to the playing conditions for World Championships versus maybe some of your local competitions back home. The players will stay out there in pretty much all conditions other than if there is lightning in the area. And if the green starts to pull. That's right. But that will be determined by the well, the venue umpire today. Yeah, Amelie Dumont, very close. <laughs> Good line, just under. So yeah, Great line. It's going to be up to Healy and Flat. Some competitions have been known to play through some kind of pooling, little bits of pooling of rain, but the moment it does puddle and start to be an OH&S issue, players will be asked to come off the green in case anyone slips or it becomes too dangerous under underfoot. Burnside Pairs a few years ago was had the squeegees out, removing all the puddles. Sounds like fun. I don't think we'll see that today on these Tiff Dwarf greens, but Carl Hilly... He's coming back nicely here. That's Very nicely. Spot. And he's a good spot. So still probably two to Australia. Yeah, the French got to go on the attack here. I open this head up. they got the back bowl near the tee. Looks to be about a yard short of the tee, the back bowl of the French. I think they need to uh, look for a result here. Go searching for both bowls or getting some kind of jack movement back. About five minutes away, apparently, this rain. We've got four ends to play after this. Big attempt here. Not far away Maxim at all. Maxim Flau. Close. Does he rock that ball up? Yep. It's at least cut one out. Australia. I think Omar just said one down. Close. I Corey Wedlock shaking his head. And... I think Aaron Sheriff telling Carl Healy to go big at this, maybe. Very close. So Aaron Sheriff just having a finger measure there. He'll let us know. Let's have a look. I have a feeling this could be one to France. Yeah, yep, the body language indicates that it is. So the French skip, forehand with weight, promoted their... Short bowl up into the head, and now all three Aussies having a close look at this. They've got the backest bowl against them, one yard from the tee. And that does interfere with shot selection, play a large part. Don't want to get the front red through the jack back for two down, and then the Frenchman draw another for three. So it's just trying to play percentages here. It's all about jack movement. So when you're worrying about jack movement, obviously it comes back to weight control. Carl indicating just with his hand gestures and body language. Turning that bowl of Corey Wedlock's a couple of rolls onto the jack might make one or two. Plenty of options. If he played forehand, the red bowl probably just stays somewhere in the head where it can be kicked out backhand. So we're probably looking at about 10 feet away here from Carl Healy on the backhand. Send it out. Let it come home and contact with something favourable. So backhand it is. Yeah. Well, and Ryan has just given us a look as well, saying it's coming. Needs the right contact here. Yep. Well, he's... Was almost the wrong contact. 
I might have actually changed the uh, the setup of that head now. I think it might be one to Australia. Corey Wedlock is not reaching for the mat. It one, is. One it is, yeah. Just wow, a, just that minor there. movement there. Oh, wow. Millimetres in that. So instead of 15-13, which it looked very likely to be, it's now 16-12. And the task all the more difficult for the Frenchman, but the Australians doing what they need to. And... You do not want that dark colour, and that's what's heading towards us. So some real heavy rain is on our way. We're in trouble. We are in trouble. Yeah. The way the radar is shaping up, that kind of rain is going to be sort of a bit of a flash flood for probably a good few minutes, but let's hope somehow it moves around us. It's moving fairly quickly. Corey Wedlock. Another ball just the two feet away. And he's been rock solid today, has Corey. Just doing his job up front. Put him in the area. Especially with the especially with that breeze. It hasn't really let up most of the day. Just being able to find some rhythm on one hand. Great leading. Forehand back end. Playing the ocean side all this match. Off he goes again. Forehand. And he's coming in on a nice angle. Is Corey Wedlock. Hang around for some chalk. Well, not quite, but once again, two good bowls. Okay, Tommy, the Frenchman, the lead, the man who's looking to marry his girlfriend, Kiki. And he's given the Jack a nice little touch on the front there. So, doesn't get much better than that from the Frenchman. Full on the backhand, he's drawn a front touch up. Was two down, now he's one up. And he's forcing Aaron Sheriff to play a tough shot here. Can he respond, Aaron Sheriff? Well, that's a great shot. Still one down, but he's opened it up. He's removed the front toucher situation, turned it into a more of a jack-high head, so much better for the Aussies. As we see a bit of discussion between the skip and second. Only four shots in it, playing the 15th end. France holding one on the head. I've stepped away to just have a quick look at the clouds and what they're doing. It's, uh, it's concerning. So Aaron Sheriff on the forehand again, as we hear Carl Healy there. Wait to the tee, great call. That's that contingency call. If you don't actually get the jack or the bowl here, you'll get back to the tee. This is just turning away on Aaron. Can he hold up to his own? He's going to pick the gap and get through. So not too bad at home. Gives Carl a couple of to play to. So a little bit of luck in the last end. Rectifies the luck for the French in the end previous. And Australia with a four-shot lead with three ends to play after this. They need to win to go through to the quarterfinals. They lose, they're out. They draw, they're out. France want to spoil the party and go five and three. Yeah, that's a good result for France. Got the tee now and the backus bowl. So Carl Healy. I don't Healy, know if they necessarily have the... Oh, yeah, no, they'd have the tee. Just makes Carl Healy now look at other options and think about the weight control. So before that... Back bowl went in by France. He could pretty much play any way he likes, looking for the kill. But now, 
all of a sudden, he's got to try and manage to get the shot and can't afford to kill it because he is one down on the tee. The way that head's, you can see their shirts, you can see the, where the wind's coming from, from left to right of screen. Do you try and play it perfect or do you run? Run for the Aaron Sheriff bowl, get it in the middle, through the shot bowl for two, exactly where Aaron was pointing there. Decisions, decisions. Looks like it's going to be some form of forehand aggression here from Carl Healy. Not sure if he's going to try and play weight to stay on, knowing that they don't have the backers bowl. He's put his umbrella on the bank. Carl Healy steps to the mat. They're four ahead. Big weight it is. Needs Aaron Sheriff's Huge. front blue through the shot bowl or Jack in the middle. Close to Jack in the middle, and he's got Omar's by itself. What an effort. Carl Healy, beautiful stroke, great release, right on target, just getting down and clipping the front bowl of Aaron Sheriff's. So there is a shot on here for the French. Yep. They can sit this nearest bowl of Australia's and make three or four. Well, that's what he's gone for here. And I tell you what, well, he's just going to drop under. But Packed another one in there, the French. Yep. Opened it right up, though. There is Carl a target. Healy needs to be very careful here, Carl. Completely outnumbered. One bowl out of the five bowls in there is Australia's. And Aaron Sheriff said, let's take our medicine. You've got to try and draw this, mate. Yep. Now, a huge rumble just came from the above. Carl Healy. He's, he's pretty happy with this, is Carl Healy. Needs to hang around. He's gone through the gap. So an opportunity now for Maxime Foy. I reckon they're going for this Corey Wedlock bowl. They've got the shot. And if they can get rid of the bowl, there is an opportunity to possibly take the lead. Needs to turn now. Needs to get down. It's coming. He's close here. I don't reckon he's got enough he's weight on it. He's drawn another one. But he has drawn in. He's made three shots. And is it four? Three. It is three. So. The light's on. So. It is a one-shot game. Three ends to play. Australia need to win to remain in the competition. France are out, we know that, but India currently sit in second spot. India need Australia to lose to go through. The French have played an unbelievable match and have taken it to this Australian trio from the get-go. They led 7-1. Australia went up 10-7. The French went up 11-10. And we have played cat and mouse all day. Yeah, decent start from Thomas over that distance. Jack length, 31 metres. That's the key now, especially these last few ends, just to get them somewhere around the jack or beyond. And that's a great example of lead bowling from Corey Wedlock. Eight inches short, right on line. And can Thomas back it up now? Something close or in behind? He's not a mile away here. It's a great reply. That's a brilliant bowl. He's nearly drawn this. Well, that's unbelievable. Thomas Loyer, he might have got engaged in this match as well. We don't know. I need to find out. Well, he's game on here. Only one shot the difference. Corey Wedlock. 
looking for a couple of feet of weight just to sit this shot bowl of France. And just missing high. What an effort. Two great shots from Corey. Playing rock-solid bowls is Corey Wedlock. One on, one behind. Great location for both bowls. As you can see in the background there, it's yep. really come over dark. It is coming. Are we going to finish just before? Who knows? 16-15 is the score. The French have been unbelievable. Wow. Thomas Loyer has been bowling for a week. They might get some help here, Australia, and they have. Ooh, still one to France, but the jack is now open. Aaron Sheriff. Can we get some Aaron Sheriff brilliance here? Forehand looking for the jack. Angling pretty well. Needs to hold on. Oh, mighty attempt. That's going to go to a great home. So, Australia. Find themselves just one down here. Battling hard just to get the shot back here. Corey Wedlock, one just short of the jack. Second shot. So the lead bowl of France, Jack High holding one. Now Baz, that last end, I think it might have actually been a four to France. I saw four fingers go up, but someone said three behind us, and it was a four. So it is sixteen apiece. We do apologise for missing that, but sixteen all is the score. Aaron Sheriff, that famous jog after the bowl. He's close, Aaron Sheriff. Needs the jack. Very close, and he's followed it through as well. That's brilliant. How many is that to Australia? Two. One down to two up, Aaron Sheriff. Minimal correction required from his first attempt. And the Aussies are happy with that. You see him jog and then stalk. He's watching, watching. It's all about how the contact comes about now. Little bit off Corey's front one and Jack down the line for two. Beautiful weight control. And that's a big bowl in the context of this match. Players know they've got their work cut out. They're doing everything they can. They're fighting hard. The spirits are high. The Jackaroos support staff cheering on the sidelines. What a match this has been. One of the best of the tournament so far. Maxime Fla. He's on a beautiful line here. He's trying hard. He is on a great line. He needs to get underneath this bowl. He has. He couldn't draw it. Has he stone cold My drawn goodness. this? Maxime Fla. Unreal. There's no words to describe how good this match has been. That is unbelievable from the Frenchman. Wide drawing arc, coming in strong and sits down for shot. The French are happy. My goodness, that is a great shot from the Frenchman. And he's finished short of the jack. So Carl Healy now with weight forehand, looking for the Aaron Sheriff bowl through the French shot bowl. Now he's stalking. stalking. Jinx. <laughs> Needs to clear the front. He's underneath. Wants to leave everything now. He has. So Carl Healy... Beautiful weight control there. Nice look with his first. Now, what is the go here for Maxime File? Well, this is all about rink knowledge, game experience, the whole lot. As much as, as much as they want to score more shots, they, I, I think they need to stay away from this Val. Last thing the French want to do is pop that jack out in the open and make it any easier for Carl Healy. So Carl Healy finds himself one down now. Beautiful attempt with his first. Only a bowl narrow. And he's gone short. So here we go. Carl Healy. He was very close. This is the biggest bowl of the match. If he misses, France lead with two ends to play. Okay. Aaron Sheriff. Information. 
from him right now is, well, we've got we've got a bit of company on the rink. There you go, the Samoan just saying, I'm going to need two greens to <laughs> play this shot, uh, two rinks to play this shot. So Aaron Sheriff, he's just giving Carla bit of the rundown of the positives and the negatives of this situation. So the negative is flicking their front bowl out of the head, which is second shot, which would mean France would lay two or three. And I think now Aaron's saying you've just got to try and draw it confidently. So Carl Healy. Maybe a yard to four feet looking for their nearest bowl onto the shot bowl. It's on its way. Aaron Sheriff is on his haunches. Has he got something here? He's very close. He's and played he's it. got it and he's made a couple. Huge from Carl Healy. It's not how many, it's when. No bigger time in this match to play a bomb. And Carl Healy from one down, as we see, he's backed the weight off because he didn't want to chip the nearest Australian bowl out of the head. Had to play less weight. He's got it solid through the shot bowl of France and stayed for two. And Aaron Sheriff, he looks up and says, brilliant, Carl. And they have a little chat, a bit of a smile there from Corey. Three-shot turnaround. 18-16. You can have the baddest day kicking for goal in AFL or rugby or shooting hoops, whatever sport it may be. It but if be... you kick the crucial one, no one minds. That's right. And Carl Healy's been around the mark all day. He's played some big bowls, but none bigger than that, especially when it matters. And that's a great sign of persistence and the ability to believe in every shot you play, Carl Healy, that is clutch personified. Two ends to play, including this. We may beat the rain. I'm not sure. Australia may beat the French. We're not sure. It's been tit for tat all afternoon, but Carl Healy has just played a bomb and a half. Comments flying in thick and fast. We're uh, trying to get the lights on. Trying to get some lights on outside for the... Oh, the outside lights. Trying to get the lights on here. It's been dark for quite a while now. So, amazing shot from Carl Healy. Thomas Royer going a bit wayward. So, Corey Wedlock, who has led expertly all day, gets another one in. They're so close to getting this match done in the rain, before the rain hits. What are we going to see? This match has just been unbelievable. The French have not gone away at all. And one thing you've seen from the French pretty much all game is hardly any short bowls. They've been firing into head, into the heads, just trying to get results and play shots for getting half of things or jack. And early on, they got a few big ones. Matt Flapper, clutch shot. What a time to produce. Matty Flapper's the king of, uh, king of clutch bowls. Aaron Sheriff backs it up with his own. That's Speaking a great shot. Of clutch bowls. That's very good from Aaron Sheriff. Australia holding three. Now it's time for Amelie Dumont. Okay. Can France reply? Currently three down the head. Need to get something close to begin with. Cut the deficit back. This bowl needs contact. It's going to take one out. Sitting behind the head, but yep. still two to Australia. Good to see Corey Wedlock's bowls being rewarded. Leading up solid all game. Aaron Sheriff, can he repeat the dose? As the grumble from above gets louder. What a great match. Scintillating contest. Aaron Sheriff looking to get another one in. Australia, so close. Here he comes again. Turn it over the jack. Well, just missing. Uh, 
And we have lights. So we're getting confirmation that it's not it's not gonna be good. The rain is closing in. We're on the penultimate end. We'll probably be on the last end by the time the rain does come. So France needs to French need to cut this back here. It's turning in nicely. Just gonna miss high for me. Doesn't want to turn it over the jack. Well, just a little edge. It's going to be up to the French skipper here to try and play a big bowl. As Carl Healy goes to the mat. Two up. Couple of drops now. Yeah, a little bit of shower happening. So now the drama continues. What an unreal match. Yeah, it's definitely had it had it all really. Some unorthodox results and shot play. You're gonna see that with some of the developing countries, but all in all, Australia have hung tough. And remember the Aussies need to win, Baz. Carl Healy just needs to be careful here, doesn't want to go moving this jack. And well, he hasn't, that's a good result. He's moved it to the right spot. Didn't want to get any part of the back of that jack. He's played it well, he played it first. Great I'm, shot, Carl Healy. I'm still backing some more drama here. Mac, uh, Maxim Fowl is, as we say, a lightning flash on the picture there. Now, is this going to get down? He's played it well. He has played it very well. He's just a little quick, but it has fallen in, so it's probably, I don't know if that's taken it down to one or two. You can just see on the running surf of the bowl there now, picking up a little bit of grass clipping. So the rain just having the smallest effect on the running of the bowls. As Carl this, chases after this one. Yep. This match has had everything. What has Carl Healy got? Can they put the nail in the coffin now, Australia? Just doesn't want to turn this bowl over onto the jack. Oh, he might have done it. Oh, my word. Deja vu. It happened against Malaysia, and it's just happened again. Maxim Fowl with a chance to level the match with an end to play Barry Lester. Yeah, I, I just can't see another opportunity to score for France here. They've been uh, quite fortunate to get a one here, or sit, sit on holding one. Carl Healy just... Unfortunate, trying to change the shape of the head up and just moving the jack back. But the Frenchman doesn't want to re return the favour here. Just has to try and back himself to play something similar. Turn around the front. That's what he's doing. Is it going to get there? Yeah, he's played he's it pretty well. But Australia one slight. up with one to play. Well, 18-17. There is one end to go. This match has had it all. It's had a five early on. It's had a 7-1 French lead. It's had the Australians rebounding nine shots on the bounce to go 10-7 ahead. Since then, we have gone tit for tat. We've even had a marriage proposal. But Thomas Royer, Amory Dumont, Maxime Fowl, they have fought so hard to be in this position against Corey Wedlock, Aaron Sheriff and Carl Healy. If the French win this end, Australia are out. If Australia win the end, they go through. They must win this end, the Jackaroos, to be in the quarterfinals. India await with bated breath. Nice start from the Frenchman, Thomas. Right in behind the Jack, a yard through, four feet. So conditions changing minute by minute here. Rain Getting closer, the thunder getting louder. Adding to the drama. A pitter-patter of rain. A shower. But Corey Wedlock, probably nearly being the player of the match for me. Well, he's locked in, Corey Wedlock. As it gets darker and darker. Five minutes left of play in this game, I would have thought, between these deliveries and the last few of the skips, so... Will we get it in before the heavy downpour? As the Thomas, the French lead, tries to nestle in. 
Well, he's not, not going to make it. And it'll be second. Corey Wedlock, he just needs to put one bowl between his first delivery and the back bowl of the French. Just cover any possible danger. So any jack movement back a yard or two, France will be holding one. So Corey, just slide in behind the jack here. Corey Wedlock puts in a second. Now it's up to the seconds. Amélie Dumont. Now the thing for Australia, they're going to have the final bowl, conceding a one on that last end. Not the worst thing for them. Although Carl Healy doesn't want to have to put down his last. Amélie Dumont. Out on a high line. I'm not sure if we'll get back from there. Not with the rain, I don't think. But they're nestling around the back here, the French. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's the right call for France. I think they need to be working down on the forehand, looking to promote their nearest bowl or trail the jack. And that's just that bit of game knowledge now that's so important, especially when it matters most. Aaron Sheriff just trying to get in behind the jack here. Well... The French, they're backing themselves to draw it clean here on the backhand. Well, Maxime Fowl has been absolutely sensational on, draw, on the draw today, but he wants Amélie Dumont to help him out. The silver medalist in Patonk in the European Championships in mixed fours last year. He's going to pull up short, I feel. So I just think that was probably the wrong call. I know they've got to back themselves to draw it, but there's two or three options on the forehand. Turn the red up for shot, work off the red, trail the jack, but it's one of those ones. Aaron Sheriff will, I think he just has to cover any danger. They make their way down. Here, Corey Wedlock and Thomas Roy. Aaron Sheriff with one to play. Australia holding a couple. The skips still to come. We are more than halfway through this end. Aaron Sheriff on the forehand as the rain starts to get a little heavier. We'll find out what this bowl is doing. And he's gone around the back. So that's about the only spot that where, you know, if large jack movement happens. Um, that that was biggest drama, losing the re-spot. So they get that early. It's right on the tee. The rain is coming now. Yeah, I Four think bowls it, left. I think it has to be forehand here. Multiple options. Turn the, shot, the nearest bowl up for shot or work in off it. Battling the conditions. Uh, the body language would suggest that he's on the wide side. Don't think it's going to get back. So nice wait. The weight was it's coming back hard late. Nigh on perfect here. Those XGs. Wasn't a bad effort from Maxim Fowl. Carl Healy with another one to come. And that's going to be followed by a loud crack very soon, that lightning. So yep. the rain is coming. There are three bowls left to play, possibly even two. And there it is. So the heavy rain is about two minutes away. Yep. So, we've hit the time limit. No, no. Oh, no. Just a weather warning. A weather warning, sorry. I thought that I hadn't heard a time warning. I can't believe this. So, once the hooter goes, they've got to stop, don't they? So You've got to tell them, Bobby. You can blow so, the hooter, but they don't know what it means. So, the players... So, it's one thing to blow the hooter, but the players have got to understand... So they've been called off here. They've got two bowls to play. Aaron Sheriff is not happy. So the update is that we're going off. So just a bit of feedback from the players. They're saying that Lightning's been around for a while. Yep. Why is the Hootie going off now? So that's just a bit of feedback we're hearing. They are going off. Yeah. So, and that, so under the rules of the game, the so best to my knowledge, Val, is that if there is lightning in the area, the OHS aspect of the sport yep. is you must come. The, the governing body has the right to suspend play. So um, the drama 
of this continues. Everybody waits with bated breath about this result. Australia are currently holding. And I'm going to go help Lockie grab the other cameras. So we'll be back in a sec. So, ladies and gentlemen, just due to your care at the moment, there's a lot of lightning and thunder in the area. So the... So our person in charge, Bobby Carlson, has just blown the hooter, asking all players to come from the green. In case of um, the unlikely event of a lightning strike um, that is part of playing outdoor sport, if there is lightning and thunder in the area. So as you can see here, we're just moving our cameras in out of the rain. The rain is really coming down now very strongly. So three, only three deliveries remain. As you can see, the header bowls there. The current setup is everyone leaves their bowls and their head out how it is. And we'll just confirm with the rules, but yep. if the stop, is, uh, the stop in play is a certain amount of time, the players will have to come back out and replay the end. Which is quite unbelievable. The drama that we've had here, Barry Lester, is absolutely remarkable. The situation is, and you can see the bowls out there, those blue bowls of Australia currently holding sway, meaning that they were holding shot. Carl Healy had his first to play of the final and possibly two bowls left of the entire match. And we have gone off. Australia lead by one. And France looking to defeat them and knocking Australia out of the competition, possibly, which is quite unbelievable. What are your thoughts right now? Yeah, so obviously the timing isn't great for both both team members, um, more so Australia, as they're holding game. Um, the worst result is that for Australia is that they go out and replay the, the end and um, the result slightly changes, but... Uh, it's a tough one for the event event boss here at the venue, which is Bobby Carlson. He's his immediate job by the rule and under his training and instructions is to, if he feels the the environment, the immediate playing environment is dangerous, um, or could be at harm or potentially, yeah, very. <laughs> we don't like to say the word, but. Um, We've got to be oh and for the players and the spectators. So, yes, there's players out there playing, but for everyone in the surrounds, the first priority is just to suspend play and wait for the weather to pass through. Um, there has been some lightning and thunder in the area for a yep, while. There has. But the last lightning strike was right on our doorstep, and Bob Carlson had been monitoring it and has the unfortunate job to blow the hooter and as we see play will be suspended and so Bob will also determine when the players can go back out and complete yeah I think so it's a, a I think yeah. it has to be 10 minutes or a yeah. certain time frame yeah but um, because the conditions change on an end as well so we'll try and bring you confirmation of, of what the what the ruling will be so currently it's we're in the final end. We had about we had three bowls to play overall. Lachlan Williams is going to check for us. So that's the tail of the tape at the moment. We we believe that they they might have to actually replay this end. Yeah, and that's right. Uh, I've I've experienced it quite a number of times over my career. Um, it's not good fun when you're holding holding shot or potentially holding a number. This is a world championships as well. It's, yep. it's The drama is heightened here because there's a lot of ramifications and permutations on this match because if Australia win, they go through. So India are waiting as well. Uh, no doubt, that Val. And in the history of sport would suggest that this has happened a fair few times across the journey. Now, if it's the third end, Australia's holding a five or France is holding a five, they suspend play and then they replay and you lose that number, could be the difference between winning and losing. It's just very unfortunate for both teams. It's happened on the last end. Um, but that doesn't change um, Bob Carlson's role. Yep, so he's, he's been trained and he's been given a role to fulfil. And it's just unfortunate it's falling on the last end of this match. So I've got confirmation, Barry, that the end is dead. 
and we will be replaying it. Bob Carlson has confirmed it. Sue Hogg has confirmed it. So we're going to have to replay the end here. Oh, wow. That was huge. You would have saw that in the background. Yep. A and massive the smell, lightning strike. You can smell it. And the end is going to have to be replayed, which is quite unbelievable considering where this match is sitting. And Barry Lester, uh, this is some drama that I've not seen in this sport before. Yeah, I'll tell you a little story. We were playing the Australian Indoor Singles 10, 15 years ago at Tweed Heads. And there was actual bad weather outside, uh, and the weather and the weather caused the lights to go out on the indoor, which you'd yep. never see at Tweed Heads. And even though the the bowls weren't affected by the weather, the lights went out. So something artificial happened. The lights went out, and the ends had to be replayed. For me, I'm not quite in favour of that because it's just the light. Yeah. But when there's bad weather, there's different. But as I, as I said just before. Bob Carlson's number one duty is for the players and the spectators to make sure they're safe from harm's way. Yep. And if that causes the players to be off by, by a certain amount of time, unfortunately the end has to be replayed. Exactly right. So they are the rules and we will continue to bring you updates when we have them, but might as well stay with you until, uh, until we do get back out there. So any questions from anyone out there about... Any rules or anything on what we feel this match has had. And we will try and bring you a Kiki update as well. Um, try and see if we can, <laughs> if we can get, the, uh, get the answer to the proposal question. Let's see how we go. But this is absolutely unbelievable. And Baz, oh, it's, it's absolutely remarkable. Yeah, it's the, one of... The drama... And this is why live sport, because it's unscripted. Yeah, you, I mentioned yesterday we were playing in New Zealand a few years back and it was that windy. We, we were actually in danger from flying yeah. objects, so we went inside and had a bit of a break to get out of the conditions. I remember the airport was closed there at Christchurch. We're only, you know, we're probably halfway through the day of play and the wind was that extreme that it was pretty much unplayable and dangerous at the same time. So the duty of care from the, I think it was big Bill Fowley at the time, his duty of care was to suspend play, bring the players in, get the spectators in out of harm's way. There was there was uh, chairs flying around, umbrellas, tables, and that's just how we need to be at sport. It in, is. In an outdoor environment, uh, it's, it's dangerous, and that's the duty of care that... Certainly, and it's the right decision. It certainly is because, you know, you can't be out there with lightning. Now, Baz, I'm going to go try and find out and see if we've got this proposal. Locke's going to jump on very quickly with you, and I'll be back in, uh, in a few seconds just to see if we got an answer. No worries, Val. So, Baz, while uh, we just wait and see how things unfold here, there's a, a chance I think we call this stream in the next couple of minutes um, if we're not getting out there soon, if we... Uh, do get back out there a little bit later. We will obviously get another stream up and going, but uh, just wanted to bring you in a couple of updates from around the venues. So um, as of yesterday, we had three teams locked in for quarter, uh, for knockout play competition. Para women's, para men locked through, and our women's force won this morning as well. They right. are top of the section, but I can give another update. Our men's pair, so we saw yesterday, they are through Brilliant. to the quarterfinals. They will play. That's great well, news. It's, it's not quite finalised yet, but at this stage it looks like it's going to be Scotland. Tell us your thoughts about that. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, I remember Aaron Wilson, Brett Wilkie. They came up against the Scottish pair at the last World Championships in 2016. I'm pretty sure it was the... It might have been either the final or quarterfinal. Pretty, no, it was, the, it was the quarterfinal, I believe, or semi-final. So Aaron Wilson on his quest to win his first uh, World Championship Pairs event there in Christchurch in 2016. Had to come across Paul Foster and Alex Marshall. So uh, Aaron Wilson, if they have to come up against the Scottish pair again, what a classic match that'll be. And um, mouth-watering contest against four of the biggest names in the event. Certainly, and I can give an update around our VI pairs as well. That one was probably the one that hung in the balance the most coming to today, well, other than our men's triples who we've got right in front of us. But they are through. They defeated Scotland by 
six shots, 18 to 12. They are through to the knockout stages. So it um, looks like, other than our men's triples who we're uh, hanging on a knife edge right now, everyone, every team from Australia is through the knockouts and fingers crossed for our men's triples. Um, I'll pass you back to Val, who has just returned. Thanks, Locke. Thanks for the updates, mate. That's exciting news. Well done, Aussies. And just glancing over my left shoulder, there is a bit of brightness appearing. Can't really put a time on it, but I yeah, just want to remind everyone what's happening at the moment. We're at the Mudry Bar Bowls Club, and this is not only are we obviously streaming this game, Australia versus France, but there was other games going on at the same time. We're in a position where there's bad weather, which is um, to the point where it's dangerous, and Bob Carlson, the, the manager on site, he has declared that it is too dangerous for the players to stay out there yep. and keep competing, so they have to come off the green. And I have some news about that, Baz. So if it's 10 minutes, if they're off for 10 minutes, Andy's dead, which it was, and and I think we've ticked over that now. So um, the end will be replayed, which means that uh, France will again have the mat and the work that Australia did to get themselves back into the contest or back into this end is is now done. So uh, we will replay it. And I do have some news. Kiki said yes. (laughs) Thomas Royer and Kiki, congratulations to the two of them. They are getting married, so absolutely fantastic. Our first proposal on Ringside Live, and it is a yes. So congratulations to the French lead, Thomas Royer, and his girlfriend, now fiancé, Kiki. Absolutely fantastic. And I reckon what we're going to do now, because we're not sure when play will resume, we are going to call it as we've just had a massive, massive sound come over the top from above. But on that wonderful bombshell, Kiki has said yes. Barry, we're going to... I'm not sure if we'll be back today or not, but we hope to bring you the final end of this contest between uh, between Australia and France. Um, so, Barry, thank you very much, and we'll catch you soon, either today or in the morning tomorrow from Broadbeach. We still don't know, but... Uh, uh, well done to you. Great effort today. Yeah, good job. Thanks, Heaps Bell. Thanks for everyone for tuning in today into these trying conditions. Yes, thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll try and bring you the final end if we can, if the weather does hold up, which we believe that it should. Hopefully, it's just a passing storm. But that has been Val Febo and Barry Lester. This match hangs in the balance. Australia lead 18-17 with an end to play. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we were almost done. Lightning hit, weather warning came, players come off. We're going to have to replay it. There's an end to go. It's still exciting. Australia need to win to stay in. We'll catch you soon.